Hello everyone and welcome to Isat Nayan, your math guide through senior high school. So in this video, we are going to solve problems that involves ratio and proportion. Okay, so do not forget to like and subscribe to our channel, Isat Nayan. Now, the objective of this lesson is to be able to solve real-life problems involving ratio and proportion. So before that, let us first define what is a ratio. So a ratio is basically a comparison of two or more numbers that indicates their sizes in relation to each other. Now, when you equate two ratios, you now have what we call a proportion. So a proportion is a statement that two ratios are equal. A proportion has three types or three kinds. This uh, We have uh, a direct proportion, an inverse proportion, and a partitive proportion. Okay, so let's try to differentiate the three. Okay, so we start with um, direct proportion. So when we say direct proportion, two quantities are directly proportional if when one quantity increases, the other quantity increases as well. Same goes that when one quantity decreases, the other quantity decreases at the same rate as well. So let us have an example. First, you are using a recipe for meatloaf that calls for 10 ounces of ground beef. The recipe is for 5 servings, but you want to make an Enough for it. How much ground beef should you use? So in this situation, we have two quantities. Okay, so the amount of ground beef to the number of servings. So when, of course, when uh, the number of servings increases, there is a need for the the amount of ground beef to increase as well, making this a direct proportion. Okay, so how do we solve um, this kind of direct proportion? Okay, so first we use your original uh, ratio. So 10 ounces of ground beef for 5 servings. So 10 ounces is to 5 servings. Now since we are determining how much ground beef should you use, we let X be the amount of ground beef that you need. Okay, and then of course when you try to determine how much ground beef is enough for it, so that should be the same as um, the quantities used for five servings. So that's equal to x is to eight servings. Okay, now we can transform this into uh, fraction form. So that would be 10 over 5 equals x over 8. Okay, so we simply solve for x by using cross multiplication. So 5 times x is equal to 10 times 8. So 5x equals 10 times 8. We divide both sides by 5, giving us x equals 16. Therefore, you will be needing 16 ounces of beef for 8 servings of meatloaf. Okay, so that is for direct proportion. Let's now move on to inverse proportion. So when we say inverse proportion, two quantities are inversely proportional if when one quantity increases, it the other quantity decreases at the same rate. Okay, so let's have an example. If 35 men can reap a field in 8 days, in how many days can 6 men reap the same field? So again, we have two quantities, the number of men and the number of days it takes for them to do a certain job. Okay, so of course, if we will reduce the number of men, then the number of days it will take for them to finish the job would increase, making this an inverse type of proportion. Okay, so how do we answer this problem? The first thing we have to do is to get the original uh, ratio, which is 35 men to 8 days. Okay, so since we are determining how many days it would take for 6 men to reap the same field, we let x be the number of days and then we equate this ratio with 6 men is to x days since we are solving for x. Okay, again, we transform this into its fraction form. So 35 over 8 equals 20 over x. Okay, so how do we solve this inverse proportion? So the easiest way that I um, found is to multiply the numerator and the denominator of the 
um, left and right side of the equation. So 35 times 8 and 20 times x. Okay, so with, that will give us 20x equals 8 times 35. And then we simply solve for x. So x is equal to 14. Therefore, it will take 14 days for 20 men to reap the field. Okay, so that is for inverse proportion. Let us have partitive proportion. So when we say partitive proportion, uh, partitive proportion is when um, a whole is divided according to a certain ratio. So say for example, there are five girls to every three boys in each class in Maligaya High School. If there are a total of 920 students in a school, how many boys are there? Okay, so you can see that there is a whole here. So there is there are 920 students in the school, which will be divided into two sets, which are girls and boys, according to a certain ratio, 5 is to 3. Okay, making this a partitive proportion. So, how do we solve this partitive proportion? Okay, so the 920 students, I have 5 is to 3 boys. Okay, so we divide the 920 students into 8 parts, actually 8 parts, where 5 parts are for girls and 3 parts are for boys. Okay, so we have to determine first how many students are in each part of the um, portion. Okay, so we let 5x plus 3x equals 920 and 8x is equal to 920 making each portion equal to 115 so this is 115 and so are the others so it's 115 as well okay so how do we determine the number of boys since we know that three parts are of the total our boys then we simply have to multiply 115 by 3 so 115 by 3 equals 354 boys therefore there are 354 boys in Maligaya High School so that is for partitive proportion okay so let us have other examples in a basketball game, the number of baskets that Chris missed is triple the number of baskets he made. How many did he miss if he shot a total of 28 shots? Okay, so for this one, we have to be able to identify first what kind of proportion is involved in this situation. So we have a total of 28 shots. Okay, to be divided into two portions okay the number of missed shots and the number of baskets that he made okay so since this is a whole divided into proportions according to a certain ratio this is a partitive proportion okay so how do we determine uh, how do we solve a partitive proportion so we uh, go to your original ratio so it says here that the number of missed is triple the number of baskets he made so your original ratio is that three is to one so missed is to made okay so to solve this we see you know that three parts is the number of missed and one part is the number of made so 3x is equal to uh, 3x plus x is equal to 28 shots okay so we simply solve for x so we know that x is equal to 7 and we are trying to determine how many did he miss we know that three parts of the 28 shots is missed uh, baskets therefore we simply have to multiply 3 times 7 okay so our final answer would be that chris missed 21 baskets now, let us have this example. A worker receives 1,050 pesos for 8 hours of work a day. How much should he receive if he only worked for 6 hours in a particular day? So, in this case, we have two quantities, 1,050 and 8 hours of work. So, as we all know, the more uh, hours that you work, the higher, of course, your compensation should be, so making this a direct proportion.
Okay, so to solve this direct proportion, we use your original ratio, which is 1,050 pesos to 8 hours. So we are trying to determine how much should he receive um, for the day if he only worked for 6 hours. So we let x be equal to the amount that he should receive to 6 hours. Okay, on the left or right side of our equation. We turn this into a fraction. 1050 is to 8 equals x is to 6. So using cross multiplication, we have 8x equals 1050 times 6. Solving for x, we know that x is equal to 787.50. Therefore, he will receive 787.50 for 6 hours of work that day day okay next example it takes five men eight hours to repair a road how long will it take eight men to do the same job at the same rate so as we all know we have two quantities the number of men and the number of hours it takes for them to repair the road okay so since we're going to increase the number of men it means that the number of hours will have to decrease making this an inverse proportion okay so to solve this again we use your original ratio five men is to eight hours okay so we are trying to determine how long so the number of hours is x making the right side of the equation eight men is to x hours okay um we now transform this into fraction so 5 over 8 equals 8 over x so to solve for this we multiply numerator times denominator on the left and numerator times denominator on the right making this 8x equals 2 5 times 8 solving for x we now have x equals 5 therefore it will take five hours for eight men to repair the same road okay next example on a plan 2.5 centimeter represents 12 kilometers how many kilometers will be represented by eight centimeters on a map okay so again we have two quantities the number of centimeters on the map and its actual uh, distance okay so we have 2.5 is to 12 kilometers of course as the number of centimeters on the map increases its actual distance also increases making this a direct proportion okay so we have 2.5 centimeters is to 12 kilometers so we are using x as the number of kilometers so our right side of the equation would be 8 centimeters is to x kilometers turning this into a fraction we have 2.5 over 12 is 2 x 8 over x using cross multiplication we have 2.5x equals 12 times 8. Solving for x, we have x is equal to 38.4. Therefore, 8 centimeters is equivalent to 38.4 kilometers in the map. So the earnings of a father and his daughter are 9 is to 7. If they received a total of 25,000 pesos, what is the share of each? Okay, so in here, we have a total of 25,000 pesos to be divided between the father and his daughter in the ratio 9 is to 7. Therefore, this is a partitive proportion. Okay, so to solve this, we use our original ratio, 9 parts to, for the father and 7 parts it for the daughter. So we have 9x plus 7x is equal to 25,000. Solving for x, we know now that x is equal to 1,562 pesos and 50 centavos. So to determine the share of the father, we simply have to multiply 9 by 1,562.50, making it uh, 14,062.50 centavos. While the daughter will have to receive um, 10,937.50 uh, gotten by multiplying 1,562.50 by 7. Okay, so therefore... 
the father received 14,062 pesos and 50 centavos, where the daughter received 10,937 pesos and 50 centavos. Okay? Next, it takes 14 hours for a faucet with the flow of 18 liters per minute to fill a reservoir with water. How long will it take if its flow is reduced to 7 liters per minute? So again, we have two quantities, the number of hours to fill the reservoir and the flow of the water. So since we know that if the flow of water is reduced, then it will take longer time for the um to fill the reservoir. Therefore, this is a an inverse proportion. Okay. To solve this, we use your original um, ratio, which is 14 to 18. So 14 hours is to 18 liters per minute. And then we use um, we let x be equal to the number of hours it takes for to fill the reservoir in seven uh, in the rate of seven liters per minute. So, x hours is equal to 7 liters is to 7 liters per minute. Okay, transforming this into a fraction form, we have 14 over 18 equals x over 7. So, since this is inverse proportion, we multiply numerator times denominator on the left and numerator times denominator on the right. So, we have 7x is equal to 14 times 18. Solving for x, we have x equals 30. Six. Therefore, if the uh, flow is reduced to 7 liters per minute, it will take 36 hours to fill the reservoir. Okay, so two supplementary angles are in the ratio 5 is to 13. What is the measure of the bigger angle? So we know that when we say supplementary angles, these are angles whose sum is equal to 180 degrees. So, if these 180 degrees is divided into two portions in the ratio 5 is to 13, then we know that this is a partitive proportion. Okay, so we use your original um, ratio 5 is to 13, 5 for the smaller angle, and 13 for the bigger angle. So, we know that 5x plus 13x is equal to 180, and then we solve for x, and x is equal to 10. So, to know the measure of the bigger angle simply have to multiply 10 by the um, bigger number in the ratio which is 13. So the bigger angle is equal to 130 degrees. Okay, so that is it for our examples in how to solve uh, ratio and proportion. And see you all next video. Bye everyone!